Hey you guys, welcome to the podcast, the, the podcast, the, the podcast. Welcome you guys to the second episode of the Just Me and Jesus podcast. And um, the first episode, right, you guys didn't get to hear the audio because I did not press play on the other side of my computer so that it could transfer to the podcast mic and so god is still good because it's the message still got out and it still did what it was supposed to do okay and so with that being said um before we even get started i just want to pray <clears throat> so that the lord can do this thing and he can speak through me and you know um let's get it y'all all right Lord, I thank you for this day that you have made. God, I just ask that you cover everybody that is going to receive and watch this podcast, watch the video um, podcast as well. Lord, I just pray that you touch everybody's spirit and that you pour out your spirit on your children, God. God, I ask that you cover them, you protect them, and you camp your angels around them, God. God, I rebuke any spirits that try to come into this into this video and disrupt this video in the name of Jesus, God. But I just ask that you humble me and you... uh. Use me as your vessel, God, and that you decrease me in every way and humble me in every way, God, so that I can say what you have been speaking to me about your children, God. God, I just pray that you cover this whole thing, cover everybody, God, in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you set people free, you deliver people, and you you bring awareness to what the enemy is trying to do to your people, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I just pray that you just do what you do, Lord, and do it how you do it, God. In the name of Jesus, I love you, God, and we love you, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. God is so good. He's so good. Okay, so... Before I even get started on this video, this video is going to be about word curses. Um, the Lord wants me to speak about it because, uh, I don't know. He just really just brought it to my attention. And this, he actually brought it to my attention like a week ago. This is back when I was at home um, for holiday break. And, you know, I was just conversating with the Lord and then he just brought up word curses. And so I started to do my, my research about it and I just started to to um find scripture about it as well and so <clears throat> i believe that the lord wants for this word to be spoken to set some people free and also for us to be vigilant for us to be careful because this is more of a a, a what is it an awareness message you know because the lord wants us to be careful and the lord wants us to discern you know what is what is blessings and what is cursing when it comes to <coughs> our words in the name of Jesus. So before I get started, I want to share a dream that I had, y'all. I'm just going to share bits and pieces because that's where he, the Lord, that's what the Lord wants me to share, bits and pieces of this, this dream. So I was, so basically, I was at a basketball game, okay? And so it was like, it was like a professional basketball game. It was a lot of people. It was like a big stadium and everything. And you know, when it comes to like basketball games, you know, you just get fresh to death. Like you, you look nice and you get fresh and you, 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 you I don't want to say fit in with the environment because you can wear whatever you want to wear. But you know, most of the time basketball games, you get swag guy, you wear your sneaks and all things of that nature. And so the Lord, the outfit that I had on in this, in this, um, dream was it was it was it was a nice outfit but it was just so weird because the colors that i was wearing i was like god i don't wear these colors like in real real time i don't wear these colors so i had on a green cardigan i had on the shirt with some um jeans and i had on some green sneakers some it was some nice green sneakers and a green cardigan and i was just like huh like i remember that that's the thing with dreams y'all i believe in the power of dreams i believe that the lord speaks to us in dreams and before i didn't really pay no attention to it until like a friend of mine um she told me about it and so when she told me about it the lord was like yeah that's what it is like you gotta you gotta look at your dreams and you have to pay attention to your dreams. I'm not saying every dream you have to pay attention to. But I still even, I don't know. I just be feeling like 
every dream like you should pay attention to because that's just how the lord talked that you know we're in our we're in that state of like just vulnerability you know when we're sleeping we're not thinking about nothing we don't have a lot of things on our brain a lot of things are on our agenda so with that being said you know he can speak to you through your dreams and things of that nature and you know just certain dreams that you just don't remember too much and they just pass away and you just go about your business but then there are certain dreams that the lord will literally like have it in your thoughts like you can't forget about it this is one of these dreams this is one of those dreams because usually i will write down my dreams but i decided like for some reason i didn't write out write down this dream because it was just so clear and i couldn't remember it like the lord just you know allowed me to remember this dream for days basically because when i <clears throat> when i came back to this dream and i would start thinking about this dream a little bit more it was days past and i still remembered the dream so with that being said i was wearing this green i was wearing these green sneakers and 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 so you know these this was days past that i started to think about the dream again and i'm just like god I don't wear green like this was this was a nice green and I was, it wasn't like no neon green like it was a green but you know it was very it was very like like it would turn heads basically you know an outfit that would turn heads it was one of those things and I'm just like God I don't even wear green in real life like you know what is this what are what is what are you trying to say and so i know this was this was all the lord trying to get me to think because child like any other time i wouldn't think about things like that i wouldn't think about oh i wore green in the outfit and all that but it's because the lord put it in my mind to think about this green you know and so <clears throat> I was like, Lord, what is this green and stuff like that? And, you know, I don't look up green, you know, what does green mean? What does colors mean? What does um, numbers mean? Like, I don't do that naturally. That's not what I do. But the Lord told me to look up what green means, y'all. And so I'm going to share with you what the Lord, our Lord, has shown me about green, y'all. Like, when I tell you God is so good because he will literally do things like this to bring confirmation to things. You know what I'm saying? Bring confirmation. This is confirmation for y'all too. Okay. So look, it says green symbolize the breaking of shackles, freedom from bondage, from bondage. It is the color of fertility. It represents bountifulness, hope in the victory, in the victory of life over death. Also, it said it represents restoration, you know, restoring things. It represents growth, um, fruitfulness. You know what I'm saying? And so when I seen it, I was, I was like, God, I was like, oh my God. I was just so happy because I'm like, Lord, you know, you really bring confirmation to your people. And that's why the Lord wants me to share this one because restoration is happening the lord is restoring things he this is his year like every year is his year but this is his year where he his spirit is moving and he is restoring things oh my gosh thank you jesus he is restoring things he, he is putting back things together <clears throat> and he is and he is changing the trajectory god is changing the trajectory in the name of jesus and so <clears throat> y'all sorry <clears throat> And so with that being said, this was this was hope to somebody. This is freedom from bondage, breaking of shackles. Come on, bountifulness, hope, and the victory of life over death, restoration. Oh, come on. God is setting his people free. He is setting people free, people free that have been in bondage. And just wasn't even aware that we were, that they were in bondage. Because sometimes out of ignorance, we just don't know sometimes. But the Lord is starting to bring awareness. He's starting to to um you know uh allow people to be vigilant, you know what I'm saying? So that we can we can get this, this blessing that He's going to give us of being set free free of being free of truly living in freedom and abundance you know what i'm saying like man i just i just really believe in the power of god and i just really believe that he wants to set his people free like it's just he, he just wants to you know what i'm saying and so yeah i think i'm done with that part right because we're about to move into uh, to word curses we're about to move into word curses and i just i want to first start off with um with 
with okay yeah i'm gonna start off with um a verse right a verse the verse hold on so it says come on god so it says death and life are in the power of tongue it, okay, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And this is Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Blessings and curses are in the power of the tongue. See, death is the curse, right? Life is the blessing, okay? So the Lord wants us to know that our words are powerful. What we say is powerful. It holds weight. And if you want, if you want to to live a life of blessing, if you want to live a life of of freedom, a life of being set free, a life of um, abundance, you know, the, the good, the good stuff. If you want to live that life, you have to speak blessings. You have to speak life over your life. You have to speak blessings over your life. You have to proclaim and decree and declare things, positive things, the, the things of God, the promises of God over your life. You see what I'm saying? If you want to speak and say, you know, and you know, I want to use this example of like, um, let me think an example that I can use. I don't know if I used this example before because you guys know I always talk about like, I feel like a lot of you guys are on my channel, um, because of my testimony video and so the Lord is using that testimony video to do other things because there's a lot of fear anxiety depression because a lot of y'all have been messaging me about those things y'all and so I feel like the Lord is, is he wants me to speak about these things <clears throat> and so I'm, I'm just using anxiety for example right so let's do this right here okay so you so your mama got anxiety your daddy got anxiety and so they're telling you daughter you know i got anxiety your dad got anxiety so you know don't be surprised if you got anxiety anxiety just might run in the family you know anxiety is just something that runs in the family and it might run in the family but it's not from god and it's not of god you see what i'm saying so these are curses that people can put on their life you can you can like hold this curse over your life because you still continue to speak it even though it might seem like that's what it is. The Lord is trying to let you know that 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 is the Lord is trying to let you know that it can be broken. Yep. He's trying to let you know that it can be broken. He's trying to let you know that you don't have you don't have to. You don't have to come into agreement with that. You know what I'm saying? Because those are generational curses right there. Those things are generational curses. You know, the enemy is looking, okay. They keep on believing this, this lie, because it's a lie. They keep on believing this lie that, you know, anxiety is a part of the, the, the generational line. So because they keep on believing this lie, I'm going to try to keep this thing up. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to try to keep this thing up. I'm going to try to, to hold this over their head so that they can tell their child that this is what it is and this is what we have. You see what I'm saying? And that's how the, the, the enemy keeps that generational curse thing going because he he the power of the tongue. The power of the tongue. The Lord even talks about our tongue being wicked. He I'm gonna hold on, because I got these verses like um I got them already like saved so that we ain't gotta go back forth. Okay. <clears throat> so come on, let's do this. Okay. James chapter 3 verse 8 it says but no man but no human being can tame the tongue it is a restless evil full of deadly poison with it we bless the Lord and Father and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of him basically saying you going up there hallelujah thank you Jesus in the worship group right you going up there doing all that blessing the Lord thanking the Lord and then you're coming out of there you're 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 spreading rumors. You're you're cursing people's life. You're saying, "Oh, I don't want this person to get that." Oh, oh, da 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 da. You y'all know, y'all know. 
we, we, we bless and then we curse in the same sentence. And the Lord is saying, which side are you going to choose? Are you going to choose to spread blessings? Or are you going to choose to spread curses? Okay? You want to you wanna friend group that uplifts you and blesses you and speak prosperity and speak abundance over you? You can't be sitting up there trying to curse because the Lord is not going to, to, the Lord is not going to taint, taint everybody else because of you. Right? So the Lord is not going to give you that, that friendship with the blessings if he know that you sit up there cursing everybody. So you, so the thing is like, it's almost like which side are you going to choose? You know what I'm saying? Which side are you going to choose? Are you going to bless people? Are you going to bless your life? Are you going to decree and declare your life? You see what I'm saying? Once you decree that, once you decree that. I, 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 um, what is it? I, I proclaim healing over my body. You decree that and you declare that, okay? It is sent into the heavenly realms. It is sent into the spiritual realm, right? So it is already being done. You have to understand that it's already being done. All it has to do is manifest in the natural. Meaning that all it has to do is happen in the natural. There's divine timing when things happen, right? There's divine timing, um, when things happen so you could you could decree and declare i decree and declare a husband okay so that goes up to the heavenly realm it's already being done but there's still timing you see what i'm saying there's still timing that has to happen when the lord will bring forth that husband right and so you gotta speak you have to speak blessings over yourself you cannot speak curses over yourself you cannot speak things and that's the thing sometimes we think that we're just it's just innocent like saying oh i have depression oh like you're speaking that you're speaking that it's as innocent as it may sound because the doctor told me i had adhd because the doctor told me i had this mental illness because the doctor told me i had this sickness so you know i'm just gonna speak i'm just gonna speak that because it's what the doctor told me and you know i'm gonna tell my friends yeah y'all i got depression yeah y'all i know y'all not smiling when y'all say y'all got depression but i'm just saying like y'all saying yeah y'all got anxiety and all these things you're just speaking it you're feeding the enemy you are feeding you are feeding that 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 thing that's not from God because it's not, I'm going to tell you right now, it is not from God. It is not from God. Okay? The Lord may allow things to happen, but that don't mean it's from him. Okay? So, with that being said, you have to renounce. You have to reject. You have to say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I do not have depression. You have to speak the opposite of what the, what, of what the doctors say. Because, believe it or not, the doctors, they're being doctors, and so they, they say they say what they see, right? But that could even be a word curse if you start to come into agreement with it. Because now it's manifesting in you. Now it's manifesting. What the doctor told you is now manifesting in you because you keep on speaking it. So you have to come out of agreement with it and say, no, I rebuke that. I don't care what the doctor said. This is not to be mean at the doctor. But you just know who is your father. You know who was the you know who holds all the cures, okay? And so with that being said, <clears throat> you have to really speak life over your situation. You cannot curse your situation. You could curse your own situation. The Lord is trying to bless something and you could easily just curse him by by you by you just believing in what other people are telling you. You know, instead of what your father is telling you. You know what I mean? And um yeah, like, yeah, word curses are, they are real. They're so real. I had, um, you got to be able to discern, you know what I'm saying? Because I had a doctor, you know, try to tell me about my situation, you know what I'm saying? And the Lord already let me know, like, the Lord already spoke to me before I even went up in there. And so with that being said, when she told me this, you know, when she told me what she told me, I was like, I could discern, I could discern the spirit, like I could, could discern the spirit that was behind what she told me. And I said, that's a word curse. I said, I rebuke that. I said, I will not come into agreement with that. Of course, I ain't saying that I lied, but I said it in my spirit. Like I was like, uh-uh. And then even when I went to the car, I was like, no, that's a word curse. She was trying to speak that over me. And although she might not think that she's trying to speak that over me, but there's a spirit. We have to look at the spiritual thing because this is, this is, we do not fight against flesh and blood. 
but of principality. See, I don't remember it, but it's a ruler's principality and 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 what is it? Ruler's principalities and powers of the dark world. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but it, it's about it's it's paraphrasing. So it's a spiritual thing. It's so spiritual, y'all. It's so spiritual. And so with that being said, you know, you just got to look at the spirit behind things. And the Lord will give you that, that feeling that's like, mm, I don't, that don't sit right with me. That's not, that ain't sitting right with me. You know what I'm saying? And so then you just tell the Lord, Lord, I, you know, this person told me this and, you know, I don't, it ain't sitting right with me. But, you know, if it, you know, I rebuke it. <laughs> Really, I rebuke it, and if I'm wrong, God, then then tell me, you know, come tell me if I'm wrong and show me, you know, what it really meant. But you know, for right now, God, I rebuke it and I reject it, <clears throat> and I don't come into agreement with it because you know what your spirit is telling you. We try to fight our spirit so bad, but you know what your spirit is telling you. And so, with that being said, you know, um, look, y'all, it's serious because even Noah. No way, y'all. Noah was a man of God, and it just showed how much we needed a savior. Because even you know, no, he got drunk one day. You know what I'm saying? And he got drunk, and when he got drunk, you know, he realized that his one of his sons didn't didn't help him out. You know, when he because he got drunk, and then he and then when he got drunk, he got naked. He became naked, and so he realized one of his sons didn't help him out. You know, and he cursed his son. He spoke like i mean he spoke yeah he spoke death over the situation because he cursed his son and he told he, he cursed his grandson really because he cursed his son's son which was canaan right and so he he cursed this line this generation right and so with that being said you know um this brings generational curses you know what i'm saying and um it just shows the power of the tongue. It just shows how even when we get in those states of like drunkenness and not being sober, that we can curse situations. See what I'm saying? And these things can come to pass. These things can come to pass. You know, the Lord talked about it so much with just blessings and cursing and just watching your tongue and watch what you say and speak life over your situation. You saw them you see what I'm saying? And um also I want to bring this up too. This is not, I mean, this is not really about work curses, but I just feel like the Lord wants me to speak about this too. Because I had a, um, a viewer, you know, message me and, you know, she, I don't know if it's a he or she, but this person was talking about, um, like, is God mad at me because I doubt? Do you know what I'm saying? I doubt so much and I just wonder if God is mad at me. And I'm going to tell everybody, I'm just going to make this a public service announcement, announcement, PSA on them, okay? The Lord is never, ever, 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 ever mad at you for doubting or having fear or doubting what he will do. You know what I'm saying? He's never, ever mad at you. That is a spirit of condemnation. That spirit is like, yeah, God is mad at you because you keep on doubting what he told you. So God is mad at you. The Lord is not mad at you. The Lord wants, the Lord wants you to come to him. And the Lord wants you to come to him. The Lord wants you to wants you to ask him ask the Lord for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me for being mad at you. I mean, I'm sorry, y'all. Forgive me for doubting you, Lord. <clears throat> Help me to not doubt you anymore, God. And you gotta believe that when when you are forgiven, you are forgiven. Okay? Because Jesus became the curse so that we didn't have to be condemned. So there's no condemnation in the body of Christ, right? So when 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 you do feel like you're doubting, when you do feel like you get in that state of fear again, because it happens, we are human beings, y'all. And so it get, it happens, okay? And so when you get in that state where you feel it coming again, because that's how that's how the enemy <clears throat> tempts you too. Okay, the Lord is testing you while the enemy is tempting you. The enemy will tempt you to, to, to come into agreement with that doubt. But then the Lord is testing you on the other hand and saying, um, let me test my daughter to see if she knows that, you know, if her faith is there, if she's going to stay faithful, even when she doubts, is she going to rebuke this? Is she going to, is she going to not come into agreement with this? Right. And so with that being said, oh, where was I going with this? 
See, I just changed directions. But, you know, we're human beings and we're going to doubt sometimes. The Lord knows how he made us. The Lord knows we're not perfect. And this is where I was going with that. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Okay? A just man falleth seven times and he rises up again. We will make mistakes. We will make mistakes. But we got to keep on rising up. We got to keep on asking God. That's that. That's that humbleness. To continue to ask God, God, I done felt my I done felt my seventh time, but I'm coming to ask you for repentance. I'm coming to for, to ask you to forgive me for my doubt. And let's move it on. I always think of God of like <laughs> this is how I think. I just be thinking like this. Okay, so everybody walking, everybody walking with God. You know, we walking at a different pace as well. But we all walking with God. Oh, He sent. God is like it's okay. And so he might have fell out of line because he sinned. God is like, it's okay. It's all right. Just just repent to me. Just ask for my forgiveness. You ask and you genuinely mean it. All right. Let's get back in line. Let's keep on going. Oh, you fell again. It's okay. Repent. Ask for, for my forgiveness. We back in line. Let's go. And we're just going to keep on doing it. You know, and you genuinely, like the Lord is going to, that's the thing. The Lord is going to start transforming you. That's the thing about this walk with God is that we will be transformed years, 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 years. You might have struggled with faith. You might have, might have struggled with doubt when you first came to Christ at 20. But you 25 and you 30. And that's something that you don't really struggle with no more. We all have our strengths and weaknesses. And we have to embrace those strengths strength and weaknesses. And remember that God's grace and mercy is sufficient. God's mercy is new every morning. And God's grace is sufficient. So he knows that we will doubt. He knows that we might fear. He knows we might have anxiety um, from time and time. But just know to not come into agreement with it. Just know that he's not mad at you for it. Because his grace and his mercy his mercy endures forever. So it's okay. It's okay. All he wants you to do is come to him with a humble heart. And just say, Lord, I made a mistake. I fell into that doubt. Please take it away, God. Let's, and then you, you, gotta, you gotta remember, you gotta believe what you say too. So when you do say that, you gotta believe, yep, the Lord don't forgive me. Let's, let's walk back in the line. Let's keep on going. You see what I'm saying? You have to just... Remember that because the enemy tries to condemn you like, yeah, you done, you done doubt it. The Lord ain't, his promises ain't coming. The Lord is faithful. Enemy, the Lord is faithful. And, and he's faithful, meaning that even though we do doubt, the Lord doesn't want us to doubt. Because that, that means that, that there's some unbelief there. And the Lord doesn't want us to not believe. Because that means you don't, you, that means, I mean, that means that, you know, you don't believe in God to a certain extent, okay? So, the Lord doesn't want us to doubt. But then again, the Lord does know the humans that he made. Meaning that the enemy will try to condemn and be like, <clears throat> yeah, 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 you, you ain't getting your promise. But the Lord is like, I'm faithful. So, although you did doubt, my, faith, my, my promises are set in stone. And they're going to still come to pass. You see what I'm saying? And the Lord is going to work with you in the process. He's developing character. He's developing. He's developing us. He's training us. You see what I'm saying? He is training us. And yeah, he really is. Um, I, I don't even know if I touched base on all the... Oh, y'all. So, I do want to read Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. And we're going to go all the way to 34 because this is a good, this is a good verse for anxiety, for fear, for, for, because the reason why you have anxiety is because, okay, there's levels to this anxiety thing. Because there's some levels that are so rooted, like anxiety is so rooted that like the doctor like literally told you that you have an anxiety problem or something like that so there's certain times where it's so rooted that it needs deliverance it needs for the lord only jesus to set you free it needs for him hold on y'all my it's about to die i'm gonna come back it needs only him to set to set it free to take out that root he can only do that and so certain times because remember like i said we fight we don't fight against flesh and blood but of rulers of principalities powers 
I'm gonna put it down below because I don't remember it. But that that just means that there's levels to this thing, meaning that anxiety for somebody could be rooted so deep in like the spiritual realm. It could be rooted so deep to those evil darknesses that it can only be delivered by Jesus Christ through his vessels. Then there's some people that have anxiety here and there. You know, I get anxiety sometimes. You know, I've even got anxiety sometimes, but I don't proclaim anything like I have anxiety or anything like that, but I've gotten it sometimes. So that sometimes that just requires self-deliverance. We gotta put in a fight too, you know what I mean? And so we gotta we we can the Lord has given us the authority to bring ourselves out of certain situations. Now there's other situations where the power is too heavy that it we it can't be done unless it's through the Lord's vessels, the people that the Lord has anointed to set you free, right? So with that being said, um, I want to read this verse about anxiety. The Lord tells us that we should not worry about our life. The Lord tells us that we should not fear. No, the Lord tells us these things because he knows these things are here. He knows it's here. So he done gave us the word for us to be able to meditate on this word. Meditate on this word and understand that this is not God's will for you to have anxiety. And um, yeah, let me read this. Okay, so this is Matthew verse 25. I'm going to read all the way down to 34. So it says, for this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the Look at the birds of the sky, that they do not sow nor reap, nor gather crops into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more important than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single day to his life, to his lifespan? And why are you worried about clothing? Notice how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor, nor do they, nor do they spin thread for cloth. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive to the, today, and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not do much more for you? It says, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith, do not worry then, saying, what are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear for clothing? For, to, for the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and all his and his righteousness. And all these things will be added, will be provided to you. So do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Come on. that's Come on. That's speaking to somebody that worry about their future so much. That's speaking to somebody. Take one day at a time. Do not worry. Do not worry, y'all. God is with you. He is here. He Look, God is here and he ain't going to put you into a situation for you to fail the situation. He ain't going to say, I want you to go there and then have you looking stupid, boo boo the fool. He is going to be there with you. And the reason why some of you guys have anxiety, because like I said, sometimes it's so rooted, generational curses, that it just has to be broken off. No matter how much praying you do, no matter how much worshiping you do, right? There, there has to be anointing to, that, to set that free. Jesus' anointing will, you know, be in one of his vessels. And that's another thing. The Lord will guide you and lead you to the vessels that he wants you to, to, to um, deliver you, right? You ain't gonna go to no, you ain't gotta go to no crystals, no genies, no, no fortune tellers, no witchcraft. You ain't gotta, you don't gotta go to that, cause that ain't from God. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Them crystals is not from God, okay? So with that being said, let the Lord guide you. And don't be, don't be skeptical. That's another thing. Don't be skeptical and don't be critical of where, where he will guide you to, who he will guide you to for that deliverance to take place. Because let me tell you something, I ain't get delivered in no church. <laughs> and I ain't get delivered by no pastor. Okay? And I still got delivered. Okay? So with that being said, yeah. 
you don't mm -mm. just let the lord guide you let the lord guide you on where he wants to take you to get set free to get delivered and and that's the thing you you you're gonna have that hunger it's that hunger that you have to be delivered because that's how my deliverance happened there was a hunger to be delivered and then when that then when you just start to tell god about this hunger that you have like you know that there's something that needs to be taken out of you the lord is gonna do it for you y'all he's gonna do it for every one of us that comes to him humbly that comes to him and and pours it out to him and just lets him know that we are just a wretched mess and we need help he he wants to help his people back to the anxiety thing though some people have this anxiety that you know sprouts up here and there because you're worrying too much about your life you have not laid something to god because when you lay it to god and you surrender it to god god will give you peace about it but you don't have peace because you didn't lay it to him some of us are thinking so much in our head overthinking so much thinking too much you have not laid it to him and so what you don't lay, he can't, he can't, he can't help because he wants us to talk to him. He wants us to lay it at his feet. So that's for somebody. But I think I'm done. And I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. I'm rooting for all y'all, y'all. I want everybody to be set free because let me, this, this little enemy, this little ugly thing, y'all, has gave me a hard time. And so with that being said, I don't like him. I hate him. Yeah, I, I said it. I hate him. So with that being said, man, you see, the enemy be knowing, like, the calling on everybody's life. And so he, he, he really tries to keep us. He tries to keep us in these shackles, in these bondages. And I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Anybody going through any anxiety, fear, depression, worry, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I cast it out in the name of Jesus. It shall bow down to the name of Jesus. And it shall not prevail any longer in the name of Jesus. God, pour your spirit out onto, out onto your people, God. Out onto these viewers that you have allowed to watch this video, God. Pour your spirit and bring them peace. Cover them and walk them through this journey of being set free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, you are good. And we are done. I love y'all so much. And I thank y'all so much. All the scriptures that I um that I spoke about, I'm gonna put them in the description box. And I might even just put it on the screen. So you guys don't gotta go through all that. But I love y'all so much. And I just pray, I I, I pray for all y'all and I'm gonna keep y'all in my prayers because the messages that I've just been receiving, like, man, God, like. I just like, God, you got to do your thing for your people. And so I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. So I love y'all so much. And I thank y'all so much. And we are gone. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the Lord is good.